Hi friends. Welcome back to yoga. I hope you guys had a nice Thanksgiving, kind of different this year. I hope everybody had something in their past week that was special to them. Maybe on Thanksgiving, maybe not. You had a lot of time to maybe explore something different. Um, this week for yoga friends, we are celebrating the Native American culture. We've done um, Latina, Latino, and um, African American. And this week we are doing Native American because in addition to it being Gratitude Month, it's also Native American Awareness and Celebration Month. So we will be reading this book. I know Mrs. Potter read this to some of you. It's called Fry Bread. And it is about the cutest book in the world and gives us a little insight into something that's important in Native American culture. A little surprise, and I hope that it works out, we are going to try to make fry bread at our house today and we'll record it and put it at the end of this um, end of this yoga lesson. There is um, the recipe is in the back of this book. So if you wanted to try to make fry bread at your house, you can freeze on that or take a screenshot of that recipe. We're going to give it a shot. I'm not sure if it's going to be great, but we'll give it a try, huh? And honor some of the people that live in Minnesota by way of tasting the food that's special to them. Okay, friends, I also have a new sequence for us today, so we'll see how that goes for everybody. You know what? If something feels hard or different, just either give it a go if you're feeling adventurous, or else just kind of go into child's pose or sit while that pose passes, and then you can catch up with us, okay? All right. Oh, also, we are listening to some Native American flute sounds today. I'll turn it up a little bit. I'm not sure that you can hear it. Um, Native American flutes, and then they often put some nature sounds in their music as well. So it works nicely for a yoga class today. All right, let's go ahead and get going. So we'll do our finger tracing. Fingers wherever you would like them. Nice long line, either laying down or sitting up from the top of your head till your tailbone. Thumb to the base of your pointer finger. Inhale, tracing up. Exhale, tracing down. Tall finger, inhale, tracing up. Exhale, tracing down. Ring finger, inhale, tracing up. Exhale. Tracing down. Pinky finger. Inhale. Tracing up. Exhale. Tracing down. Ring finger. Inhale. Tracing up. Exhale. Tracing down. Tall finger. Inhale. Tracing up. Exhale, tracing down. And finally, point your finger. Inhale, tracing up. Exhale, tracing down. Very good, friends. Okay. Today we're going to start a little differently. We're going to start in hero's pose, which just means sitting on your heels. Hands to heart. Inhale your hands up overhead and shift your hands to one side. Feel a nice stretch and shift your hands to the other side. Very good. Arms back overhead, folding forward onto the floor. And now we'll go into our child's pose for a minute. Go ahead and check in with that breath, rising and falling against your legs. Now 
the Native Americans are so connected with the natural world around us. And this breath always reminds me that I'm connected to nature. When I think about the ocean or the lake, lapping at the sand and then retreating back and lapping and retreating. Just a little reminder that the whole world is connected. Okay, come back up to seated. Just something that we need to know when we feel maybe alone in our spaces right now, huh? Okay, friends. Once more, walk your hands forward. And now, bring your hands to one side of your mat. It's a little stretch. Sometimes we stretch in down dog, our hands, our head down, or not down dog, in child pose. Today we're going to lift our head up and your back hand can come a little further behind you. Almost like parallel to your mat, if you had a mat there. You can see where my hand is way back here. A nice side stretch. Okay, let's walk our hands to the other side. Oh, that feels good. Started a new workout yesterday. Gotta tell you, I'm feeling a little tight. Been a while. What's something new you would like to try with your extra time at home? Maybe there's something you've always wanted to learn or do. Maybe now, since we don't have school, all the time to do something like that. All right, tuck your toes, friends. We'll go into our first down dog for today. Remember, you can pedal your heels by bending one knee and then the other. Rocking your head. And find some stillness. Take a big breath in here. On your exhale, shift into your high plank. Very good. Now we're going to do something a little different. Lower down to the mat. Then instead of having doing a cobra, we're going to bring our arms behind us and, do, and lift up the same with cobra, only you're not using your hands. You're just using your belly muscles. This pose is called snake pose. If this is uncomfortable, go ahead and plant your hands and go back to cold. Okay. There you go. Good job. Plant your hands back on the mat. Come through tabletop. You wiggle your hips out a little bit. If anything's feeling tight back there. Okay. Tuck your toes. Come back into a downward dog. Take a couple breaths here. On your next exhale, step your feet between your hands, then inhale your hands overhead. Okay, very good. Now we're going to do what is called just, let's see, make sure I get the name right, sun breath yoga sequence. So our arms are up, then we exhale by folding forward, inhale halfway up. Now we skip the chaturanga. Lucky we just bring our hands back down. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale to your heart. Friends, let's do that one more time, okay? Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, hands to heart. That is, has a good rhythm for linking your breath to your movement. If that's something you'd like to try in today's yoga practice. Okay, now we're going to go into the push-up series. So inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Now we get ready for a push-up. Plant your hands. Step back. I'm going to start with my knees down today. Exhale, down. Push up for cobra or up dog. Exhale back into child's pose or we'll all meet together in downward dog. Very good. Now, inhale, this is something different. Your right leg or one of your legs high to the sky. You want a nice flat line from your head to your toes. Then, 
As you exhale, bring your knee toward your nose and plant your front foot. Good. Now inhale up to warrior one. We're adding some things, transitions kind of, to things we usually do. So it's a little trick here. We'll all meet here in warrior one. Then turn your hips, remember? We're going into warrior two. Hands parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the floor. Very good. Now this should feel more familiar from last week. Shift forward over your front hand. Stick back your front hand to the ground. Back hand to the sky. Warrior two. Now turn your front hand over, bring your front hand to the sky, back hand to your leg. Very good. Now we'll windmill our hands down to the mat and bring our front foot to meet the back. We'll hang out here in downward dog for a moment. If you feel any tight places in your body, just gonna wiggle that around. All right, left leg to the sky or other leg, whichever one you didn't use last time, okay? Bring that through to your nose. Plant your foot. Bring your back heel to the ground and we'll do the same thing on this side. Arms up to the sky, warrior one. Now we'll turn our hips to the side, warrior two. Really good. Shift forward over your front hand. There. Yep. Tick tock your hands and look at your top hand. Good. Come back to warrior two. Now turn your front hand, bring it up to the sky. Back hand onto your leg. Good. Now we'll do that windmill action on this side. Bringing your hands to the mat. I will keep my knees up this time. We'll do a chaturanga, okay? Exhale down. Inhale, push up. Exhale into child's pose. And we'll all meet together in downward dog. Very good. Okay, that was something new. Inhale here. Now on the exhale, step your feet between your hands. Inhale your arms up overhead. On your exhale, we're going into chair. Now friends, chair is something we haven't done in a while. Remember, we're sitting down like we're in a chair. Bring your hips back. You see how my legs are straight, this part. My shins are straight up and down, so I can see my toes. So we'll stay here for a moment. And now we're going to try a new pose. Twisted um, or revolved chair. What you do is bring your hand to your heart. And then this elbow is going to come here. It's going to the opposite side of my body. Now, if this feels uncomfortable, you can put your elbow between your legs, or you can put one hand on your hip and one hand on your knee. Okay, let's try that. So I'm going to do this today with my Oh, oh, and then you look to the side. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling kind of ticky. How are you feeling in this pose, friend? Okay. Works the legs. Now let's straighten up for a minute. Hands to the sky. Whew, hands to heart. Give those legs a little rest for a moment. Okay. Let's try the other side. So back to your chair, then hands to heart. The opposite elbow comes outside your knee. There you go, or in between your legs, or hand to hip and hand to knee, okay? Maybe I'll try this for now, because that might work best for some of you. I know I've taken this pose a lot of times. Just kind of hang out and let our legs hurt a little bit, get some exercise there, huh? Let's come back to center. Inhale our arms up. And exhale, hands to heart. Okay, friends, 
Let's go ahead and do our tree pose. Okay? So, you know what to do. Shift your weight into one leg. Find the place that you like to put your raised foot. Look at something that's not moving. Inhale your arms up overhead. And grow your tree when you're ready. If you'd like, you can shine your heart. And back to center. Okay, let's try our tree pose on the other side. Raise your hands to the sky when you're ready. Grow your tree branches. Shine your heart. And hands to heart. Excellent. Let's do one more of those sun breaths, okay? Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands down. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, hands to heart. Very good. Okay, friends, we are going to try one more challenge pose today with something we've done before, I think, in both lower grades and upper grades. We are going to try our crow, okay? So let's go ahead. Okay, I think I'll show you from the side. Yeah, that's kind of wrinkled. Bring your hand to the mat or, or carpet just a bit in front of you, okay? You can see mine are about right here, about 18 inches in front of my feet. Now, I'm going to bend my elbows so my tricep is once again where my knees are going to go. I shift my weight forward, leaving my toes on the ground for balance. It's important to look ahead of you quite a way, okay? So I my hand planted, my gaze is ahead of me. I'm going to take one foot off the ground. We'll see. Now I'll take the other toe off the ground. There. You see how my toe keeps going back down? Sometimes. You just need to get a little tippy. Oh, I remember last time I fell on my right on my forehead when we were doing this. You know, it's just something fun to play with. So you guys can pause it and try that a little more, show a younger brother or sister, or just be done with crow. Okay, friends. Let me get my papers all stacked here. Let's go ahead and do our stretches. Feet forward. Remember, try to hinge from your heart and not your head. Reach forward. I really like this music. Okay, okay next time we're going to bring one leg to the side, the other foot in towards our side, belly button towards your extended leg. And then just forward down. Remember, any place you can reach is great. Wherever you feel a stretch, but no pain. So, your foot, your thigh, or your, sh or your shin. Okay, friends. Let's just switch to the other side. Very good. Belly button over this leg. Shifting forward. stretch right here. This sitting up might be enough stretch for your legs. You might want to bend your legs a little bit if having them flat hurts, okay? Do whatever feels good for your body. You don't want to see what this picture looks like. It's practically flat on the ground, okay? I'm shifting down. 
this is where my stretch is going to be today. Sometimes once you get into a stretch, then you feel like you can go a little deeper. There's no pressure to do that. Your muscles might just get warm and used to where they are. All right, now we're gonna do everybody's favorite, yours and mine, boat pose. Okay, feet down, knees up, arms out. You know the drill. Let's see, thinking where I wanna go today. Leaning back, feet up. I think this might be it for me today, friends. Okay, feel free to extend your legs if you'd like. I'm sticking here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Very good. Okay. Let's come back onto our back, lying down, feet planted, knees up, arms wide. This is old hat. Go ahead and drop your knees to one side, nose facing the other. Big breath in and out. Good. Bring your knees back to center and drop them the other way, nose facing the other direction. Bring our legs up the wall. Some knees stay pointed toward the sky, lifting your feet high. Once again, noticing the feeling. How your legs, your feet, and the bottoms of your legs tend to feel lighter up here. Really good, guys. I bring my hands behind my thighs, bend my knees, and rock up. Okay, friends. Let's end our practice with a um, volcano breath today. Whew. Thinking of somebody. Maybe a lot of somebody these days, huh? There's so many people I miss in my life right now. And I bet you do too, but guess what? We're all connected. Remember the invisible string? We're still together right in here. All right. Inhale your hands high. Breathe in their faces. And exhale. Send your wish of love. All right, friends. Let's go ahead and read our book. We'll push forward here. You can see it really well. Move my lamp back. My assistant is doing her schoolwork right now, so it's just the two of us. Okay. So once again, you saw this book called Fry Bread. Look at that cute little picture. Oh, love it. I tell you what, if I could have a million babies, I would. Okay, so let's see, this is a little glary, isn't it? Just a little much, Miss there. Fry Bread. Fry bread is food, flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Those kids look excited, don't they? Fry bread is share. Hands mold the dough, flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove. The fire blazes from below. 
drop the dough in the skillet. The bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color, golden brown, tan, or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna, or earth, light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor, sea beans or soup. Smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with families and friends. Fry bread is art. Sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. You can see all the different crafts they make. Fry bread is history. The long walk, the stolen land. Strangers in our own world. With unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place, Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. And we know Minnesota is right in there too, don't we? We have our own Native Americans. We have the Ojibwe, and I think in the south we have some Lakota or Sioux. I'll have to check my, check my sources there. Fry bread is nation. Mm. Okay, I apologize to anyone who knows how to say these better. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, they're in Minnesota, Onondaga, Ogallala Sioux. We might have those people in that that um, tribe in Minnesota as well, or in there in South Dakota too, I believe. Mm, Narragansett. Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac and Fox, and hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small. North, south, east, west. Brown, yellow, black, white. Familiar and foreign, old and new. We come together. Isn't that beautiful? Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fry bread is you. Look at that little guy. So cute. So friends, this is the page that has the recipe on it, and here are the instructions. We're gonna try that in a bit. And then here it says a lot of information. If you check this book out at the library or find it somewhere, it has some nonfiction, a lot of good facts about fry bread around the country and about Native American history. Okay, let's see, there's something I wanted to show you. Yeah. 
here also in the front and back of the book are all these tribes. They're different groups of people. Some are officially recognized by the US government and some are not. Look at all those people that live on the same bunch of land that we do. I have been excited to learn about our Native American neighbors um, this month. I've been redoing some other reading of my own and they just have a lot of wisdom to share. It's amazing to me, regardless of the different races or all our diversity, that we're really better together. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed this class. The kids and I are going to make some fry bread later today, which I think I'm gonna attach onto this video. Feel free to watch it. It should be, I don't know, a little interesting, but you for sure don't have to. All right, have a good week, guys.